I want to do introductions first. Um, oh, sorry. Te welcome, welcome. So welcome everybody, the teacher teaching teachers. Um, uh, amazing teachers have come to show some of their student work here tonight. Um, and it's kind of a new space, so um, feel free to move around and figure it out. Um, gave some hints to that. Um, Janelle, if you want to find a chair off to the side, remember it's the arrow keys. You can move off in different directions. And unless it's not working, but anyway, okay. Why don't we very, very quickly do some introductions? Um, and I'm going to start with the uh, youngest person here, Rohan. Do you want to introduce yourself? And then we'll just go sort of um, clockwise. Uh Oh, um, my name is Rohan, and I'm a student in Ms. Dredronchi's class in eighth grade. Cool, cool. And sometimes we use now comments and AI technology to help us with our writing. <laughs> All right, Rohan. <laughs> that was that was a really nice. clear introduction. Go ahead, David. Get that out of the park, Rohan. Um, my name is David Cole. I'm a former writing teacher third grade, fourth grade, 12th grade college, and then worked in publishing and ed tech and have done a lot of innovation work with literacies and have had the pleasure to work with writing project teachers on some of these things. And this is one more example of that. So I've been joining these conversations for a few months now and uh, learning a lot. From you too. Janelle, welcome. There you go. Hi everyone, Janelle Krishnan here. Um, I am a writing project fellow and uh, a former high school ELA teacher who was an early adopter of all things uh, technology, especially as it focuses on writing uh, with um, adolescents. So now I've really been thinking a lot about how we can support teachers and students and using the tools in, in important and powerful ways. And I'm just happy to be here and happy to be a part of the conversation. Oh, I love how you put writing project fellow right up top there now. <laughs> cool, cool. Chris. Right. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media production at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. You're up, Sam. Hey, folks, this is Reed, a.k.a. Sam. Uh, teach young folks at the U School to read, write, and make sense of the world. I'm going to do that primarily through African-American history and English or humanities. Cool, cool. I'm Paul Allison, and um, I, I have this wonderful place in my life where I get to go into Bonnie's class and, um, and then talk to Sam. And anyway, and then keep track of all the amazing stuff you're doing. And I try to pull it together and, and get you to show each other because... Uh, you're all doing really interesting stuff, but it's different. And we, I think we can all learn from each other. Bonnie. Hi, everybody. My name is Bonnie Breeze Bentoum, and I teach 12th grade students in Philadelphia at Science Leadership Academy at Bieber. Uh, my course is Reading, Writing, and Rising Up. So it's English language arts. However, um, I do so much more with young people and for young people in reference to language and life and building steps for their legacies, um, their legacies in living and their legacies in learning. So I'm really excited to be back again. Um, I had to put it in my calendar so I remember um, to be here. Um, and I guess I should say my students right now are working in Now Comment and um, uh, what are they doing? And also with youth voices. So they're learning how to incorporate AI in their writing and their thinking, how to negotiate that. And I've only been back to school for three weeks because I'm coming back off sabbatical. Mm -hmm. So I'm putting them, you know, feet to the fire very quickly before they leave high school. Cool, cool. welcome. Ellen, Terry, sorry. Yeah. You're muted, Terry. There you go. Okay, uh, Terry Elliott, uh, I live in, I'm a retired teacher. I've uh, been, I taught uh, K through university 
for about 25 years. And I've been a shepherd. We raised sheep for about 40 years. And uh, I am really and interested. I, I love that that's not a metaphor, but go ahead. Here. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, it is and it isn't. <laughs> um, and what I'm, what I want to do is, uh, I want to work with, uh, uh, adapting, uh, chat GPT languages, learn, uh, LLMs, uh, for personal use by students research and among other things. Well, cool. Rowan, welcome. Nice to see you. Thank you. Uh, Rowan Haywood. I, teach at Central High School. I teach ninth graders and I'm using now comment. And I think my students are just running with it. <laughs> Nicely said, yes. Right now you're reading the Odyssey, yes? It's yes. A, yes. And let me just, <laughs> I, I know you haven't gotten there yet, but I did create two GPT thinking partners who are um, Athena and uh, Poseidon. Poseidon. Um, and That's I've been awesome. having fun. I've been having, so here, let me just, it, it, it kind of, it, to, to, I had this like tweak, like, oh, maybe um, AI is like the gods, right? But, but I'll, I'll, I'll let that rest for a second and, and we can come back to it. Anyway, I haven't tried it yet. I know. Um, Nick. Good evening. Uh, my name is Nick Cuyos. I was the English department chair in a district outside of New York and Westchester County for 33 years. And I just retired last June and Paul and I are now partners and we're embarking on a process where we attempt to influence the path of AI in instruction because we really believe that it should be guided by teachers and not by tech people. And so We've created ways to have protocols that we have tested and, and have proven to be very effective, the guiding writing partners for students as they try to evaluate and improve their writing. And so really embarking on this huge journey and it's a very powerful and positive process that we're going through. Welcome, Nick. Christina and Jack, maybe in the background. Maybe not. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Right. I'm Christina Cantrell. I work for the National Writing Project. This is my partner, Jack. Let's say hi. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, and Jack's in language learning and um, has a lot to say about GPT and um, OpenAI and all that, too. So um, he's been uh, hanging out a bit here. Um, and in my work, um, I'm also, what Nick said is really what I'm interested in is like teachers and uh, students leading the way, not the other way around, not the industry leading the way, but um, uh, so anyway, really interested in all the work that you're doing. And finally, uh, we started with youth, we're gonna end with youth. Adita, welcome. Do you wanna say hello? Hello, uh, my name is Aditya. I am Stadonsky's student in um, that's University of Jersey, and I've been experimenting with AI um, in very, uh, mostly I'm part of the debate team. So what I've been doing is I've been trying to use AI to help me um, uh, in my debate team debates. Cool, cool. I gotta, I, I gotta figure out with your teacher how to get you guys extra credit for coming every every week. It's, it's great that you're coming, but uh, yeah. Anyway. So so wonderful. Listen, I'm on the table, and I'm I'm going to do the. I, I, th those introductions are really important. So thank you, thank you. I I don't think we skipped anybody. I think we're good. Um, but I'm I I'm so I so I'm sort of I'm not really hijacking, but I added a slide to the digital discourse practices, and I want um Sam to maybe jump in, explain just very briefly what these slides are about. They're in the middle of the table. If you don't see them. <clears throat> yeah, just to give folks a, a little context, a group of uh, writing project teachers in Philadelphia and Denver, we've been doing this work around digital discourse. And as we were focusing on the, like the key moves in digital discourse, there's this thing called social exchange, social making and social annotation. And then they came up with this really, really fancy graphic to represent all of that cool stuff. 
Uh, and I'll let the fancy graphic kind of speak for itself, but all of us were already doing a lot of uh, these things and you're probably doing them already in terms of moves around like social exchange, having dialogue with text, social making, like creating text, as well as annotating with text. And these are the things that we all do in our, our, our literacy humanities uh, classrooms. Um, Christina, if she wants to add anything with the fanciness of the graphic, she can go, <laughs> can go there. Sure. Um, with these different um, kind of ways of working or and creating, um, we were thinking about context. So one of the layers there is um, kind of about audience and purpose and um, context, like in uh, the considerations to make. And then um, these are some of the, this flower one is more about kind of some of the moves that happen, how teachers foster cr criticality and support students in building and each other and building relationships and um, et cetera. So um, there's sort of different layers that we've been looking at. And um, yeah, the teams have been, um, one of the, thing, the powerful things I think, I mean, other people should say what they think, but one of the things that I think is quite powerful is sort of putting names to some of the th things that we do. You know, we also often talk about digital practical literacies as like one big lump. And um, this starts to tease out some of the different practices and some of the different moves and considerations and allows for kind of deeper conversation about what's happening. So I think it's interesting to see this layer added Paul, um, to it and as a like, yes. provocation. I, I like that. Yes, it's a provocation. So um, what what I started to think about and have, have talked to some, some of the people who are, well, Amy and others, and they seem to be thinking, yeah, in a similar way, um, the different ways that we have begun to use GPT thinking partners on Now Comet and in other places. Um, have to do with reading in one case. Um, and so the social annotations, mixing that with um, AI annotations in there as well, but then using AI to support writing. But then the, the stuff that um, you guys from New Jersey um, have been doing is really about chatting because it's in a, on a discussion board and they just put stuff up and then respond to it and, and so forth. So it's a so we're kind of using um, the same three kinds of discourse moves. Uh, that I'm misusing that word there. Sorry, um, discourse categories, but using it with AI. And I think digital discourse. Uh, this is, this hasn't been announced yet, but <laughs> I think they're they're going to be moving toward um, looking at AI even more this year. So it'll be kind of exciting to bring all that together. Um, is that fair? Are we good? Okay. I was going to say they're. Go ahead. The, at the base level, I think they're practices, Paul, just for language help. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Um, I don't know how to start. I imagined that people would go out to. Uh, everyone would go over to Chris Sloan's. Chris, do you mind? Are you ready to share some stuff? And uh, in. Um. in Sure. In particular, I would love for you just to share some of the free writing. Could you do that? Because it's like yep. very simple and direct. Mm -hmm. if, that, if that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, Warts and all. So I what I want to do is so I, I did say, and if you look at the map, you could later you can come back here and you'll be able to find some of the stuff that Chris has presented. I want Chris to start us off though. And I instead of separating out we'll all stay together is that okay thumbs up there yes or any any problems with that okay that don't mean presenting less time but well yes but this floor i hope is a place where we can store resources come back and look at stuff together um if you join now comment and in particular join that group down there that there's a link for it there you can then see all the stuff, even though a lot of it's private, um, but you can go and see it. 
So Chris, can you share a screen and kind of lead us through some of this with Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, with a little chagrin on my part too cuz you know, uh don't always hit home runs, that's for sure. Um but I will share what I've got here. Okay, I'm going to share my screen, I believe. Okay, and if I yep. that's good. Um kind of. Let's see. Are you looking at just an email? We are. No. Okay. You, if you just Let change do... no, that's yeah. Okay. Oh. I will do it again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we'll be looking at mirrors of ourselves for a little bit here. Yeah. But if I switch now, are you looking at now yeah. comment? Perfect. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I. <clears throat> and by the uh, way, people, you you there's a magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner. You can make it bigger yourself. But go ahead. Yep. So um, the, my students are kind of at the beginning of a problem solution uh, sequence of writing. And so they still hadn't really, I mean, they're seniors in high school, so I think they kind of understand the drill, but um, I still think they were um, thinking through their um, questions and what they were going to do over the next five weeks or six weeks, it may be. Um, and so this was a free write um, that someone wrote on the left. And it was just like, you know, write for 10 minutes. I turn on a timer, go. So before I um, did this, I thought like it would be interesting to engage uh, free writing AI just to see what would happen. And so what you see is uh, Abby's free write on the left that she copied and pasted in. And so it's definitely not great writing. You know, this is like stream of consciousness writing, write as much as you can in 10 minutes. And I, I had a timer, 10 minutes, stop. Um, and so then I, what I, I want to say, I think that is great writing, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know, yeah, I mean, it's it's not it's not carefully crafted. I understand. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And and so, um, yeah, she's great. No doubt about that. Um, so I um, had I think I have some guests coming in the house. Don't mind me. Um, <laughs> and uh, so uh, we engaged with the free writing mentor which we could, you know, share what that is exactly. But um, what well, identifies have... three themes and then give suggestions for how to write about those themes. Yeah. 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 Um, and let me get something here for a second here. Just go up. She's up. Is it a... yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so um, what she asked the free writing AI mentor was help me think of other ways Utah Affordable Housing Act affects homeless rates in Utah. So that's pretty specific stuff. And um, that's giving her some thoughts about how to proceed with the topic based on you know what she's written so far. Uh, and then I had them um, critique, you know, give feedback. Feedback was what I told them. You mind and reading what she wrote there? So she says, I like how it identified the concepts I already had in place, but provoked thought in regards to expanding the ideas I had already written about. Furthermore, the AI allowed me to think about the rippling effects of the Affordable Housing Act or ha that it has on people throughout their daily lives as well, and the many barriers that could arise if housing rates continue to increase. And then um, she asked another question. And that was, what is the history of homelessness? And this was to a background knowledge tutor. So I, I encourage them to think about like the free writing thing. And this is where, this is like warts and all. Um, you know, this was in the chaos of a classroom the first time using it, you know, things can go wrong and that kind of thing. So really, I think looking back on it, probably would have engaged more with the AI uh, free writing. But anyway, we zipped on to the next one and, and I said, you could also ask, you know, like, give me some background knowledge on this issue just to make sure maybe they're they're up to speed with uh, some background knowledge. 
And so again, I was like, well, you know, I was just curious how, what they thought of the feedback they got. And she says here, the AI gives me more feedback in identifying places where I used more historical evidence. However, I wish it would guide me more towards other history sources or ask questions. For example, consider how this is the current Salt Lake mayor, how Aaron Mendenhall's policies have compared to those prior and how they've affected the homeless rates and qualities of resources. So, I mean, I think her questioning this actually is helping her think like where she's going to look next. So, yeah, that's so that's so that we can get as many gone as we can. And you've done yep. so much more work. Um, I, I'm glad you showed this, though, because like we all sort of know what free writing is or and and but it's a very simple use of not simple, but direct use of the AI coaches that that's what I liked about it. Other thoughts that people have for Chris here quickly, having looked at this? I, yeah, I had a quick question. How, like, how did you decide to use uh, now comment versus you voices it with the the AI tools that are available in each you know application? Because I haven't I haven't used uh, now comment in this way, but I'm I'm just curious. Yeah, um, I think if I remember right, the free writing mentor was. I could see the script in now comment and I couldn't figure out how to see the script in youth voices. I think, I mean, this was, uh, not that long ago, but I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah. Cause I think I wanted to rewrite something in the prompt. Um, and I knew how to find it in there, but in general, to answer your question, I would say I'm going to use now comment versus youth voices is I'm going to use now comment to have them, put their text that they're researching and annotate it. And, you know, how does that, the annotations are all about how the text addresses their uh, inquiry question. And then I'll use youth voices, the AI on youth voices um, to help them improve their writing or think about their writing. So the one I see it as like their reading and the other, I see it as um, helping them with their, their own original synthesis and writing of this stuff. Other thoughts, questions, feedback, thoughts for Chris? Yes, yeah, so my okay. question is, um, as far as, um, so she did the free write, and when she asked um, the free writing mentor the question, had she highlighted the entire paragraph or, uh, or the entire 10 minute write or a specific sentence? Did she hone in on? I for the mentor to support or assist her in her work? I think it was on the document and I don't think she highlighted a particular thing. I think yeah, it's she used she used that AI right beside, see the general document comments? She used the AI right on that line. Yeah. So it is, many of us came into now comment and many of us still are in now comment um, as a, a place to read and annotate. Um, it is absolutely also a um, a writing platform. Um, you can you can write directly there. You can copy and paste the way Chris's kids do. But so that that is that worth knowing. And we've duplicated most of the templates that are on Youth Voices as thinking partners. So you know they're probably in both places. What I am at, what I, what I would love is uh, for students to be able to use both if they want to or whatever, you know, um, and and just they'll find AI wherever they go, <laughs> right? And so that's that's what that's some of it an answer to what you were asking, Sam. I think, yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't know who to go to next. Um, Rollin, do you do you want to um so I have, can, are you ready to show anything maybe from the Odyssey or what do you want to show or what do you want to talk about? Why don't you just talk and then we can figure out what to show. So as you're, you're muted, Roland. So what's been fascinating about Roland and, and she is, a, there is some links in the top right. You're still muted. You see where to unmute. It's a. It's a micro microphone in the bottom white. 
Oh, <laughs> so um, Rollins students started with the house on Manga Street. They did not use AI there at first. I think toward the end of the, the book they did. Then they read the Poet X and it was kind of fascinating to see how they grew in their use of AI there. And now they're reading the Odyssey. There was a book in between, I think you did as well. Um, Rollin, it's at the bottom. Oh, <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll come back to Rollin. How about the, or maybe she's back. So, and in between, they also wrote a poem. So they use now comment as a writing place and they, they put the poem up and had, um, had it, we looked at it there. Rollin, you need to unmute. There's a mic thing at the bottom of the screen. It's a white bar at the bottom. You hit mic at the bottom. Or there's something wrong. I thought you said hello earlier. It's the reverse order from Zoom. There's camera first and right? then mic. I don't know if that's helpful. And that's my thing. Um, work yeah, on it, it Roland. And uh, okay, I, I think that means go on. Um, okay, let's go to Bonnie. Bonnie, do you want to jump in and say what you've been doing? Oh, are you there? Oh, you, you are. Sorry. Hi. And, okay. Yes. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Perfect. All righty. Let me see what I can present. Right. Let me see. Pop out video secondary. What does it do? I think I'm going to be here. Am I here? Yep. This isn't me. That's good. Okay. What well, this isn't me. It. Oh, you know oh. what? I came out. Wait a minute. I so, am not in my in my right person here. I mean, I have another screen. I need to present in my um, uh, Bieber account. I'm not sure if it can do this. Let me see another window. Oh, yes, here it goes. Here it is. Good. All righty, here it is. So right now, the students have just been introduced to um, the 1619 Project Magazine article. I, I believe it's in the book as well, A Traffic Jam in Atlanta. Um, so the first thing they all did was comment on the image itself, um, because that's how I introduced the 1619 Project in a very gentle way. Um, and so they just look at this and talk about how it's connected to slavery. So really I had them this year just go in and play like a playground because I forgot all the different things that Now Comet could do. But I did tell them that I would teach them how to use AI responsibly and in respect to their own voices, their own writing. And you know, the first thing the young people said, you gonna teach us how to cheat? And I was like, no, I'm going to show you how um, AI assist the intellect that you already bring into the room, to a digital page, into a space. And that's how I sold them in to use it and be willing to just be in on this playground with me. So that's what we did first. And then, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, students, in all their wisdom that don't look beyond the default measures, um, all used um, the thinking partner that came up first. It was some text to something. What was it, Paul? Text to self. I think was, I, they got interesting stuff with that, though. So, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. But I had them all deleted because I said, listen, this is getting ready to get crowded because my students, <laughs> I mean, they, they really like it, though. They just go crazy with it. And um, and I had them go back. And so Paul gave them 12 thinking partners to just start out working with because I didn't even give direct directions about which ones to choose, what to do with it. I just wanted them to go in there, get messy, get dirty. 
Um, but right now, they had to now read um, the entire article. And that's what they were doing today and start writing. Um, some of them were saying, well, should I have AI write my whole thing? And I was like, no, AI should write your entire response. Um, AI can um, support your thinking. So first I asked them to read the entire article. Then I asked them to go back or, or and or annotate the article as they read, um, thinking about their um, literary criticism analysis uh, lens that they chose um, to read within this article. And they chose different things. Um, and I gave them that right. Um, and so what are they doing today? Uh, so they had a big assignment. Can you all see this um, yep. canvas thing right. now? Yeah, we see it. So this is what they're doing right now. And you all, Paul has been at He's in all my classrooms. Um, yesterday, we were together all day. Um, and, you know, we both learned some things about these groups because they're new to both of us. Um, and like their learning styles and how they get through step-by-step -step instructions. However, now they're here. I, I took them right from, okay, we're with Paul all day yesterday. We learned how to use now comment. And oh, uh, and we learned how to look at youth voices. We learned how to do that too. And now we're jumping back into reading and writing. So they have a huge document. And I guess I should show you this document too. I know that I'm going real fast because I don't want to hog the time. Um, and so first thing they said, when I told them they can make a copy of this document, the first thing they said was, should my answers be on this document? And I said, no. Your answers go back into now comment. Now, what they have to upload for me is... Um, uh, screenshots. So I know exactly where to go because I'm telling you, my students write so much, you all, I can't even keep keep it. I can't figure it all out. It's so much. Um, but I told them they could answer one question from any of the bolded items. And then just from memory, I was remembering all these literary lenses. However, you all need to know that I use AI too. And so I used AI to generate the questions and then I go in and read them and, you know, and edit and all of that to bring it back because some things I'm doing really quick and dirty. So, so Bonnie, one, of, one of the questions I had, and um, not that we're going to answer this now, Chris, if you could, if, if you're still there, I don't know, you might be, um, is when they're reading, like I gave, I, I made you a list of a dozen thinking partners that would support a reader, but even that's probably too many. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, and then we also created a Nicole Hannah-Jones uh, thinking partner so they could ask her what she thinks about something from the article as well. But that's a whole mind <laughs> bend that they have to get their head through and you have to get your head through and think about. But have you thought about like which thinking partners I heard you say go play and I get that. And some of them came up with really interesting ones other than not so much. What are, what's your thinking about how to navigate when to do well, AI I, I and saying, which ones? Yeah. After listening to um, Chris was the person who just shared yeah, this work mm -hmm. that it does, they need to go to specific. Like I could break the class up in groups, this set, use this thinking partner, that set, use that thinking partner, because they were, as I can see from their responses today, nobody chose a thinking partner, really. Yeah. They yeah. just did their own writing because I said they need to do that first. Even mm -hmm. as I gave permission to use a thinking partner or either they use the thinking partner that this young man is pretty smart though i you know i don't know the children that well yet so it's really hard to tell but if when i read it i can tell whose voice is talking and this is what i told them though i made sure i said with every student 
every group today, do not allow the thinking partner to remove your voice. Do not allow the thinking partner to take your power, your thinking, your intellect away. So, you know, in, in presenting it like that, like with urgency, I think they heard me because it, it, it's not here. It's Any not questions here. for Bonnie? Her thoughts? Yeah. Hey, Bonnie, this is David. I got a question. When you talk about when you give your students this um, inspiring challenge to not let them remove their voice, how would your students, you're talking, you're talking about seniors, yeah? How do they think about their own voice? How do they explain that back? I'm curious about that. Well, you know what's very interesting? I have a um, literacy student teacher in the room twice. They hate mm -hmm. fire guru. Fire <laughs> guru is their voice. But yeah. they thought it was too much in their face of what they sound like and who they are, but they mm -hmm. love their voices. But I don't know if they love their voice in on a public stage, you know, because mm -hmm. they know this is public. And I'm not sure if they like it on that stage. Um, because we had a, a, a long discussion about fire, because you know, they were all in it. Oh, look at fire guru, look how that, that, that. Oh no, he sounded too much like me. Blah, blah, blah. So uh, <laughs> you know, it was really interesting. But you are how many days have I been doing this, Paul? Like three or four days. Yeah, so yeah, far. we're we're right at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're really Although, at the beginning. Yeah. So I have to remember all the things that are there because I did not remember everything that's there. And yeah, yeah. uh I, I, I'm glad my um I have to uh tell you it, my students went and told the principal right away that Miss Bentum is teaching AI, and he <laughs> sent me an email that had a picture uh, to me and the engineering teacher. We both do crazy things in our classrooms. And he sent, before we work on artificial intelligence, why don't we do something about natural stupidity? <laughs> so um you know that's the kind of place where i work so really i could just play around and stuff like that um i want to so, see if roland were you able to figure out your mic i want good good yes do you want to jump to in leave. i had to use that uh zoom i yeah i know you, you, so it I was zoomed out so much i get it yeah next time i'll remember to suggest that sorry about it okay so yeah we really were slow in the beginning because I told Paul, I said, I don't know how to do this. And, um, you know, the school doesn't allow now comment because it's outside. I had asked. And then, so we went through the, um, the other way so we could use it. And my students started with annotations. That's simple, very simple. We had, uh, maybe I can, I can show you Oh, where's my present at the bottom? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yes. Can you see my? You'll be an expert soon, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so you may be uh, here. Okay. Here. Let's do this one. Perfect. That's good. So, yep. But this is stage, this is recent. Mm -hmm. And we were doing, at first, We I just asked them to annotate. And then we experimented with AI. But I, I made, I gave instructions to have TQEs, so they have to write two thoughts, two questions, two epiphanies, and maybe figurative language to include in that epiphany. And then uh, they have to have two AI questions and respond to AI. And then that's for books one through four. And for book five, so every but book. Did, I, did everyone get that? Could you say that just one more time? What do you ask them to do? Say, say it again. I asked them to annotate using right. TQEs. So thoughts, questions, and epiphanies. But thoughts, for the epiphany, epiphanies, yeah. So for the epiphanies, I, I asked them to, if they can't find something surprising, they can use um, figurative language. So what mm -hmm. were they impressed about? The figurative language part. So that was it. And then we graduated to using AI 
ask AI two questions and then respond to those two questions. So that was the, um, the assignment per book. And then, so I changed it and it was, it went very well. In fact, I, I am thankful, Paul, that you taught me how to do the analytics report because when I was reading all their responses, it's just too much. I have five classes. Oops, what happened? I don't see you. You're yes, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, gee. Yeah. No. Oh, I'm still here? Okay. You're great. You're so, here, and we see what's on your, we see book five here. Yeah. So, so, so for with book five, because it's about the, um, the nymph and again, another um, woman, I asked him to change it. So where, what does, um, what does women, uh, how are women perceived in the Greek culture? So that was the focus. So I tried to make sure that each book has a different focus. That way they can, you know, it's not a boring for them to read and annotate for certain things. And then, um, so that's where we are. And then Paul now introduced the gods for AI. And they, my students, I think, really appreciate it because, it, you know, remember they're ninth graders. So whatever information they, they have, it's like they're sponges. Oh, okay. Now they, they remember to use it in their, in fact, they use some of the terms in our Socratic seminar yesterday. And um, what else? I also use this for- what, do you mean, what terms do they use? What do you mean by that? Oh, uh, well, you know, when when they are describing background information, uh, so they they would, um, I forget what- um, So you mean they, some of the terms that were in the AI they were using in the Socratic dialogue? Yes. So uh, I can't remember. So, but the student even said that, you know, in AI, and he gave background information as to what he remember about that particular conversation. But if you can see in their conversation that they really question and appreciate the uh, information that they receive. And um, what else am I doing with them? Oh, I also use now comment. So for... just I just want to clarify that also. Just, to, mm -hmm. just like Chris had his students talk about how they felt about the AI, you have them do that as well. They get the yeah. AI response and then they have they have to go in and, and say what they're thinking about it. Yeah. Right. And also and ask them to write three responses to outside their own. So if they have to look at other responses and they have to respond to that as well. So it's a, a conversation uh, in the room that I'm not, where I'm not. So, and these are all homework assignments. They We don't do this in school. They do this at home. We don't do now comment in school except for, you know, really? discuss. They do a lot. Yeah. Yes. Can you so, scroll down through there a little bit? Hold on, Rel. I just want clarification. Yes. But yeah, for everybody yeah. keep asking questions. Yeah, you ahead. can't get into now comment in your in your network at your school? Or is um, not allowing you? Blocked. It's blocked. So we have to. I didn't know use, that. I encourage students yeah. to use forgot password. But it's not blocked on 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 mine. Oh, for yeah. So that they, means Central got a special sauce or something. <laughs> they <laughs> they have. It's actually it's not blocked, but you have to go through uh, forget password. So when the students sign in, they have to use forget password, or sometimes it's on if it's already on. And but Paul, if, you signed her up with like her student, like you did with me and Bonnie. Yeah, yeah. Um, Roland, if we we might be able to sorry, resolve sorry, that. I didn't mean to hijack them. No, no, I, it, no that's important. Them. Shoot. Why, why do they have a problem? <laughs> Shoot. I, I'm amazed that they do as much work as they do, given what you just said. But um, Oh, they do homework. That's the, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, so, Roland, know, maybe this is working for you. I don't know. I, but but we can we can make it work better. Um, they do homework. Do, unlike do you have, Grant Edison, right, Roland? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I tried I, to print it, Paul, the, the analytics report. It's yeah. to almost 300 pages. I said, no, I can't write. And that's one class. One class. Mm. It, it's amazing. I can, I can show you how, how so, it looks. So talk about that a little bit. How do you, um, you don't get overwhelmed by it, though. You still let it happen. So you yeah. see, this is the beauty of, of this homework part. 
is they do the work. I just sit down here and listen to them. And, and, and I look at their responses and it really amazes me how they interact with, with the text. So, you know, it's, it is a lot of work when I really read and, um, and see, because I have to put a grade in. So I have to put a grade depending on the quality of the conversations. And, um, I, I think my students get it now. They, sometimes they get annoyed because I give a lot and they do a lot. As you know, one class has over 300 pages of analytics report, and that's only book one. Uh, By the way, everybody can find that. If you can't find it, I'll I'll help you find it. That's um, but go ahead. For, yeah. for for the one, but I, I don't know if it's helping you really. <laughs> it's, if it's the, but, the analytics yeah. report, no, I'm sure it is. But you could you could then go in and see what one student does. Then right? Or, yes. How do, yeah. you, how do you use it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So oh. This one is different. This one is uh, the um, No More Elegies Today. Mm -hmm. I had this poem, and then they have to recreate that poem and write their own No More Elegies Today. And then uh, I had students comment on on their poem. So all their classmates will comment, would comment on their poem. That's another way I use now comment. And this is quite interesting, too. This is um, This was in the classroom this poetry that we had and then um for the for the analytics report this is uh, i'm gonna show you this this is just amazing let me see so i go we, re to we really need the entire hour with each of you but but go ahead yeah so, sorry am i taking so much no time you're not no that's I, okay so I, i'm just wishing there's more time so um, where where do i go I, now I, the comment so it may be here okay here you go so I, this is the- We don't the, see, oh, we're seeing book five still, right? Book five, so let's see. Um, how do I go back to groups? Okay, yep. there it is. There you go. So if you notice a so book one for, oops. Go back to your library again. Okay, there you go. There you go. So there you go. I'll take this one first period. This is the least number of students that I have. So with that in mind, let's see, book one, this one right here. Which Rollin, how, how many days have they been working on that? And they have 619 comments in there. <laughs> so about about week, probably, started yeah. February 1st. Mm -hmm. And this is just the first part. We're already in uh, book three so there okay so this is just three books in in okay. the odyssey okay and so these are the comments right so mm -hmm. this is the ai interaction so if i have to sort i i go here to sort so sorted and then you if you go down it's sort it sorted the um all this is all but tools questions thoughts um and then i go here to more and do the analytics report so I put there um, 224, 24 from February 1st, for example, to, does that make sense? Yep, you did the first, I think you did. Continue. Oh, I didn't say, sorry. Um, it's um, so, so, okay. So that's the one, 224. And that's that's the end date. So that's today's date. This that date. says June up top. You have it till oh, June. June. Okay. So this is two, mm -hmm. one. So if I run the report, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then I would only choose only one, for example, because this is going to be a lot. So if it's just one class, why do I have so many? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's too much work, Rowland. Uh, yes. So, for example, if it's just one class, right? Too much. Yeah, it is too much work. So, but it is really easy. It's not. It's not as difficult as this looks. So, I'm going to uh, group it by commenter, and I want a detail because I want to read their work. So, it will create a report like this. I just look at volume and look at the number look, of comments look, kids look make. At this. Yeah, but, yeah. Right, right. So, 
this one student did all this. Mm -hmm. That's one student. But you get to see so, one student's work all together then. Yes, all together. Right. And without all the, the jarble in there. Yes. But, and you know, I don't know what learning management, I have my students take screenshots of their work now. I'm That's like, what I heard you say that, buddy. Take a screenshot and upload it on the canvas. I did, I, did, I did the screenshot thing too, but also just go and look at the global numbers of commentary. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm I'm scan I'm scanning and getting the gist of things, but and then I'm looking at volume, and based on volume, that's how I'm grading. <laughs> yeah, look and at I tell them like if you do so many comments, you're gonna get you know this because you gotta. I mean, with my kids also, I gotta keep it a, a little more simpler, maybe as well. But so, they don't keep it simple. I don't think the students keep it simple for themselves when you lay this out for them. When I mean, and and what even looking at Rollins, what this is saying to me is young people are on to digital discourse. They're on to thinking about reading, writing, um, and literacy with digital means. I mean, they're really liking having, you know, a device. They like but, this. But here's and the it's thing like about we just put them in their space and they're running away. Right. But if your kids are struggling with their literacy skills, is a is a different challenge. But what happens is the thinking partner helps them. The thinking yeah. partner helps them, and then they don't look like they feel about right. writing, reading, and thinking. Yeah. So I, I'm seeing that too because none of the children shy away from this. None of them. Mm -hmm. Roland, did you want to show us something else? You brought so, it back. Yeah, yeah, I was just uh, showing how um, the analytics report really helped a teacher. Like, say, for example, this students only did two visits. For example, this is just for this week. Mm -hmm. So, um, two visits, fourteen comments, and I could I could really see how many uh, how many they've done, how many times they have. Uh, you know, this one has five visits. And that and it's I think it's the more I, I play with it, the simpler it, it looks. I mean, it, it seems to me it's not too bad. Have you thought about self-assessment where they could choose their three most interesting comments? And Bonnie, I hear what you're saying about the screenshot and go for it, whatever you want. But just to know that they could also send you links to their comments. Right. There are ways to do that, too. Yes. But, yeah. But I, I'm the upload queen in Canvas in my school. I, know, I, love I, know. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to mess with that. Go for it. But, Roland, have you imagined that that possibility of them sort of sifting through the work first themselves and choosing to present to you what learning they've done based, like, here are my five best comments in, in the Odyssey so far, whatever? Uh-huh. No. So, no. Yeah. Okay. No, I haven't. Um, I can. <laughs> okay. And it was all of them are best That's comments. Something, something to think about. I I, I did have one I, I, another question. I keep wanting to ask it. And it's, thank you so much for coming tonight. You are uh, you're you're not the only busy, but I think Philadelphia teachers are the busiest teachers in the world. I can't believe it. <laughs> but but so uh, I guess. You're, you're, you're like teaching this class and that class and going there and there. Anyway, so it's great you're here. But one of the questions I've been wanting to ask you is if you've noticed a change in the three, you've now had them use AI a little bit in the first book and then in the Poet X and now in the Odyssey, have you noticed a change in how they're thinking about AI and in between they did their own writing, right? Yeah. But. At first they didn't like it. At mm -hmm. first they think that it, you know, it's it gave me so much more than I need, and then it's just hard to follow. At, that's the the first reaction when we did House on Mango Street because AI mm -hmm. gave them when we talked about character development, 
and uh, talk about this talk about this character and AI gave them okay if I'm a, a college counselor, uh, you know they were given feedback as a co- as a college counselor. So it's just too much information. But now I feel like they're interacting to uh, AI with uh, more excitement. Depend you know as shown by their responses and and um, they're choos- they're choosing better thinking partners as well. I think yes. the ones yes. that make more sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool. Um, thoughts, ideas? Sam, Paul, do you want to? My yeah, thought, thought before you go on, Paul, was I'm not going. Oh, to. my yeah. goodness. If people talk about Philadelphia public schools, step <laughs> on their big toes because our young people are doing some things and they have a lot to say, they have a lot to share, and they're highly intelligent. And people have counted them out for so many years. But what is working with now comment in youth voices is putting these young people on the public stage. Like, don't count them out. Don't count them out. Um, yeah. I'm in awe every day, Bonnie. I'm in awe every day. Hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, a proper Sam, clip. Sam. <laughs> Sam, what do you want to do next? I'm, I'm just let me, let me put it. Let me put it to you like that. Like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna share a screen. I'm just going to tell a story. Yeah, yeah, just go about for the it. work. So recently, I had my my ninth graders. I'm teaching like a ninth grade or uh, freshman orientation class. We do a little bit of writing, critical thinking, etc. So we're t- going. We're exploring like preparedness, like you know, emergency preparedness. So I had them write a uh, hundred word uh, disaster saga and kind of like how um, kind of did it in that uh, quick, like, okay, hundred words, we're just going to do it. And, but we used, we used uh, youth voices to use the, uh, the, 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 the AI uh, content improver to Im- improve their, their writing, but I modeled it for them. And then when we w- went through the modeling process, I took a student, I took a student's draft of his hundred word saga, and then we used the uh, content improver and we so- we looked at the both versions, and then we got into a whole debate around like, is that original? Like, is this is this not original now? You know, we got into like the or- originality, the authenticity, and we got uh, eventually like some kids were pushing back. Well, this is not exactly what I was trying to. This is not exactly what I'm saying. So I'm like, oh, this is why you now you take the improver, you take your version, and now this is where the writing really happens. Like, again, writing is a process, but for some, for some, that's like work, and sometimes they don't want to put in that work. But at the same time, uh, the conversation around like, uh, like who has the who has the authority, who has the ownership of the writing once uh it, it you use the ai and this this was this was the real rich conversation and um i'm curious to like open the floor to hear how other folks are thinking about and even even now like even me as a writer and B- bonnie says like we use ai and sometimes people might like when you say you use chat gpt now people are, like look at you divisively and like oh you use chat gpt like how are we moving people beyond that because like it's a writing it's a it's a process it's, it's not and so um, I just wanted to offer that for like kind of like closing conversations. And just, like they, they, just like they moved beyond the year uh, 2K. What was it? Two, the year 2000 and the world was going to end or something, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, you know, what, what came out? A washing machine came out and they didn't have to wash my hand anymore. And I was going to kill us off and you know, <laughs> this, all these different points that are just going to take us away, and we're still here. But the converse, but you are you having those similar rich conversations around like what's the authenticity, the originality, and all? Are you having those conversations with my colleagues more so because oh, the children the kids. are so excited? The children are so excited; they're running around in school telling everybody what they're hey. doing in Miss Benton's class. Sam, so then, I have. I, I, sorry, but I have an I, idea. Aditya, did you hear that question? Do you want to jump on it? 
Mm. Uh, what, which question are you referring to? Just like um, all these AI tools, um, are they getting in the way of learning, thinking, writing, um, or are they supporting? There, uh, I think it really depends on how you use them. Uh, if you if you use them with the express intent of uh, doing as little work as possible and making uh, and using the AI as a way to cheat, then you're not going to get much out of it. You're not going to learn. Uh, I know there's definitely kids who would um, use use AI and stuff on their projects, but on the same time, like if you're like using it to, for example, if you have like a project or something and you're using it to get like ooh, cool images for your slideshow or something, or you're using it to help with your writing or like how, how I'm using it with my debate or, so, or how some of the other kids have been using it. I think that as long as you're not using it to do 100% of the work for you, as long as you're using it as a tool, it's like a calculator, really. It's like, if you're using it to help you, then that's great. But like, there, there's definitely places where you should be using it and places where you shouldn't be using it. And so part of part of the, I think part of the tension, uh, thank you for that. That was great. Part of, I think part of the tension was like, when kids see their original work with the flaws in it, right? And then when we, when we put it in the content improver, particularly when we use the uh, youth voices, the content improver, it smoothing it out. It made it more, it in most cases the story had more it was more it was more fluid it was more it was more clear but the but it wasn't exactly what they wanted and now that's where the work had to come in taking uh the improver the content improver and taking what they had and meshing it together and the the with some kids the cognitive load of doing that for some kids is higher than for others. And again, I'm, I'm dealing with kids that across the band mm -hmm. in terms of like cog cognitive ability. Right. And so the, this, where may, this, this is where you, I, I think teachers have so, to give a lot of support um, for students that, that, that need that need that help. And I think that's where some of the tension was coming with, with some of my ninth graders. They, they like what AI produced, but, they like what they had as well and then what they had was maybe more authentic but it didn't do the job like when you, when you again you got to think about your audience as well and so it, it's 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 a it's a learning process um but i just wanted to share that with folks and see other and sam sam keep keep your eye on like i mean I, i'm totally interested in the students like Aditya, who show up here and who are into this, and, and, and but I'm also interested in the other half. Maybe it's even more than that. Who get turned off by it and don't like it and don't want to use it and don't understand it and all that. Like and the cognitive load you mentioned. I think we need to pay attention to students at all different levels and and how they're responding to stuff. So I really appreciate that you're noticing that and bringing it out. Can I uh, interject? I'd love to throw it. Go, part. Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So you've been I waiting. Love, yeah, <laughs> I, I love I love Sam's observation about all this, and that's been a foundational aspect of my existence. This whole idea that the kids are with me for forty minutes a day for one hundred eighty days, but anything I teach them, it has to transcend the confines of my classroom. Like it can't be about you just being in my classroom and needing me to be that feedback. And I think that's what's happened in the past. We used to be the AI, right? Like we would give the kids <laughs> feedback and edit their work and we were the AI. And so if we start to shift the way that we view this and instead view it as a tool that can be an assistant, that's where the power comes in. I and literally so did that. I'm sorry to cut you off. I literally did that today. A kid came over uh, with her piece and Mr. Reed, what do you think? I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Here, let's bring up the content improver. Now let's look at, I read them both out. I did, my sis was to like read both of them out so she can hear them. Yeah. And then she was like, yeah, I need to go back and do, like, then it wasn't, a, it wasn't a hard sell. She's like, yeah, it's stuff here that I need. And it's yeah. stuff in my original thing. I need, I need to, I need to mesh it out. And she didn't have any problem with it at, at that. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, it's, I it's obvious, but I need to point out that there's AI, there's a student. And there's a teacher mediating that experience, yeah, right? Yeah. And how different that is than, you know, 
other experiences with AI. Yeah. I mean, the way I see it, I told the story today when I was, because I do this all day, every day. <laughs> this is my life. And so I told this story today. In the past, it would be, I would have a line of students who were waiting at my desk when we did individual writing. And so, and they'd say, Dr. K, look at my introduction. Dr. K, read my body paragraph. Do I need more evidence? Now, with AI and what me and Paul are working on, I would say, well, go back, feed it through AI. We have a different site. It's called writingpartners.ai, but it basically takes the proprietary software of now comment and it really directs it towards writing. And so we create writing partners for students that are very specific based on curated, you know, the stuff that we do, the stuff that you guys are talking about. And it's a separate site. And so I would say, no, no, don't, you don't need to ask me about your introduction. Go feed it through AI, get feedback. And then you and I can talk about the feedback. It's like just taking that step out or even, you know, the other, the, the big comment was we don't have time for this anymore. And we don't, we don't have time. We can't give feedback in a meaningful way. So if we could use AI to be that bridge for us, that's what it should do. Like it's that worker. It's like a worker bee, you know, it does the bridge stuff for us and gives the feedback, but we train it. That's the whole key. Like we have to train it because we're the experts. We can't have people who are tech people training this thing because they really don't know about writing. <laughs> they honestly don't. They know about tech. And so when you talk to people specifically, the rich conversations that we're having about writing and voice and all those things that you guys are so adept at doing, that's the big difference for us. The big difference is we're saying, look, we need to be in control of this AI thing. And we need to teach the students that we're not generating writing. We don't need that. You know, I, I'm a big Kurt Vonnegut fan just because, you know, he's an old white dude like I am. And so honestly, and he always said, if you don't write well, all right, you probably don't think as well as you think you do. And his assertion was really founded in logic. It's this idea that when I think, when I'm sitting here thinking, I'm thinking using words. I'm using words to, to determine my existence, my perception of reality. And so the better we can get at teaching kids how to use words to organize their thoughts, support their thoughts, have critical stances, have these ideas, that's what AI can do. It can help them to be better writers, which makes them better thinkers, which makes their life better. And so it's like this whole intertwining of all these different things that AI has this tremendous potential to do. And so that's what's so exciting for me. And me and Paul have been doing a ridiculous amount of work on this and, and it's been hard <laughs> and challenging, but also really great and fruitful. And so I really appreciate all your insights on that. It's really helped me kind of clarify all that. That's all. So Nick, I have to jump in before we come off because you talked And about, if anybody has to leave, we totally understand. Go ahead. <laughs> I, like it comes through their thoughts. My students, asked one of the Bengali students, when you think, what language do you think in? And he looked, he looked at me first. I said, you need to know ahead of time that I'm one of the teachers that thinks it's a crime that when you come to America, we say, speak English. Right. And so he turned back to the student, he said, I think in my language. Bengali. So as as thinking partners are being created, what are we doing for the world of thinkers and young people? Um, because we cannot forget them. Um, no, absolutely. So you're you're making a deep point, and and I, I'm sorry to cheapen it to a, the tool, but I I would love for that student to create a thinking partner in his language. And he can do that, right? So, yeah, so <laughs> that would be interesting. Yeah, yeah and that was a great more point. More than one. Yeah. And hey, Paul, hey, hey, Bonnie, I tried to use ChatGPT with Setswana with, with my son Tato. He's like, Dad, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, so, Sam, Sam, there's a uh, Ruth Nathan um, has been con comparing, um, she's been putting prompts in Now Comment and, and using different thinking partners and putting prompts in ChatGPT. And the results, she's been like looking at the results and she's like very, very excited about what NowCommon is doing. 
ChatGPT cheapens and ruins the the results. So we need to get away from using ChatGPT because we have better ways of doing it, right? We um, I, the mo the 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 more pure language from the model comes through our our um, thinking partners and not through that commercialized thing called ChatGPT. And so we, you know, so anyway, I, I just want to keep saying that and encourage. Well, I'm glad you're that. saying it. I don't have to pay $21 a month anymore. There's that too. Paying. There's that too. And there's, and there's, and there's the issue of when they go through an comment, they're not putting their identified in, you know, their, their personal information out and the content doesn't end up in their servers also. It comes back to us. So it's safer and more ethical way to use AI. And it gives you better product. So I just want to kind of make those Chat GPT is points. blocked in the district, though. They block Chat GPT. Okay. Well, it sounds like now comment is in some places, too. So we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. Anyway, Roland, you and I need to talk. Um, folks, I, I want to give you all a break and say thank you, thank you. Um, I want this uh, floor. This is a floor in... Um, Kuma space. I'm going to keep adding links um, and you can come in here any other time and kind of see what people are doing. Um, want to make that available to people. We can meet here other times and keep talking. Anybody else want to jump in with any words as we leave? Uh, yeah. So okay. I, think, I think I think I told, I was talking on the call, I think it was two weeks ago. It was, yep. I don't think you were there that week, right? It was That's the week right. That yep, yep. Yeah, so I I don't know if I told you, um, so I'm part of this uh, club at school, the engineering club, mm -hmm. and we're doing this project for a state comp for a state engineering competition, and one of the projects we're doing is me and Rohan are uh, working together uh, to create a video series, like a vlog series, about ethical ways to use artificial intelligence. Oh my gosh! And uh, hopefully we win the competition. Okay, it's a blog series or a video series, or it's both. Yeah, so it's like a video log. It's a it's a vlog, and then a like a video series, uh, and then we send okay. the the link to the competition, and uh, all the all schools across the state are gonna uh, students in schools across the state are gonna put in their create their own video series, and the best video series wins like the awards and stuff at the state. Uh, wow! Competition. Wow! So could could you? Could, I, I I joked earlier, but I'm serious. Everybody needs their own hour. Could you come ready to present that right at the beginning next week? Like what you're doing and what you've come up with so far? Sure. I'd, um, yeah. Me and Rohan are going to have to little talk Rohan. about it. We haven't really done much yet. Okay. <laughs> but we, need, we need to start doing that because the deadline's pretty soon, like in a month. Okay. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Go, but goodbye. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Talk to you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you.